good morning students welcome back to the another video of our fourth chapter that is sorting materials into groups now let us see revise what we saw in our last video we studied about materials and objects that means we differentiated between our materials and objects so objects are something which are made up of material then we studied about why sorting of material is important further we studied about properties of material and we started differentiating our materials based on their properties and first was appearance so we divided materials into two types based on their appearance that is shiny materials and dull materials next we divided materials based on their hardness that is soft or hard next based on their surface that is smooth surface or rough surface so today we are going to define or differentiate materials based on their solubility now what is solubility so for an example uh, take a glass of water and in that pour some salt or sugar and mix it well when you mix the salt or sugar in the water what do you see that the salt or sugar uh, disappears after some times it get mixes in the water now the substance which get dissolved in water completely they are termed as soluble substances that means when we are mixing salt or water salt or sugar in water it gets mixed it get mixed up completely it disappears so it can be termed as soluble substances but whereas on the other hand if you will try to mix the sand oil or chalk powder in the water try to take some sand and add that sand in that glass of water what you will see the sand will not get mixed in the water instead after some time the sand will get settled down it will form a layer under the water that means at the bottom of the glass so the some components which do not the substances which do not dissolve in water completely will be termed as insoluble substances so based on the solubility of a materials or substances are divided into two groups that is soluble substance and insoluble substance now over here we have taken two solutions first one is our sugar solution and second is sand in water that means when we add salt to or sugar to water what we can see over here is the salt or the sugar it gets completely mixed up in water and we cannot say whether the salt or sugar was added to water or not whereas when we add sand to water you can see that the sand particles have settled down in the water it has settled at the bottom of the glass or the beaker so these are our insoluble substances when we add the drop of oil also the oil also does not get dissolved in water so it is also insoluble substance moving further we can differentiate our materials based on their property that is flotation in water now what is flotation in water the substance we saw that some substance that do not get dissolved in water so either sometimes what happens the substance either float on the surface that means it either remains on the top layer of the water or sometimes it gets sinked at the bottom of the uh, jar or your uh, glass like when we took sand and try to add sand in the water what happened what we saw that the sand particles settled down at the bottom of the glass but whereas when we took oil and try to mix oil with the water we saw that the oil it remains on the upper layer of the water that means it floats on the water so now some uh, substances have the property to float in water now the examples of such substances are oil wooden plank feather and balloon now you would question that why do these objects float on water and why some objects sink in water now this is defined the floating property of any substance is defined by its density now what is density density that means mass per volume mass is that means suppose you are having any material or an object so the matter how much matter is added to that object it will be termed as mass of any object and volume means the space which is occupied by any object in three dimension it will be termed as its volume so whenever we divide mass of any object by its volume the vol the figure that we get is the density of that object now each and every substance or object has their own density 
Now, when the density of object is less than that of the water, it will float on its surface. Whereas, whose density will be more, it will sink on the, it will sink in the bottom of the water. Like oil, when we are adding oil, so the density of oil is less than that of the water. That's why oil floats on the surface of water. Whereas, when we throw pebbles or when we throw stones in water, the density of pebbles and stones is more. Than that of the water. That's why it gets sink in the water. Now, one might one question might hit your brain that then why does the ship it sails? How does it sails on the surface of water? Because the ships are very heavy than that of the stone also. Now, these ships they are made in such a way, their designs are made in such a way that they can easily float on the surface of water. Now the design and the manufacturing or the physics behind it allows the ship to sail on the water and that is why the ship does not sink in water and it can float easily on the surface of water. Moving further, the substances can be dif uh, differentiated uh, based on its transparency. Now transparency, uh, whenever you are having some subject, object al along with you, try to pass some light from that object. So some objects will allow the light to pass through it very easily, whereas some objects will not allow the light to pass through it. So based on the allowance of the light passing, the objects are differentiated into three types, that is transparent, translucent and opaque. Over here we have taken three images. The first one is your transparent. Now what do you mean by transparent object? The objects which allow the light to pass through easily are termed as transparent objects. That means when you take a glass and uh, turn on your torch or the flashlight of your mobile. So as you will turn on the flashlight of your mobile and you will keep uh, on the glass, you will see that the light can pass through easily and the light can be seen on the other hand or on the other surface or on the wall. It will reflect on the wall. So glass and window pane are the examples of transparent objects. Next, translucent objects. What, uh, the, what are translucent objects? Now these objects, it will not allow the light to pass completely, but only some amount of light will be passed through these objects. So these objects are termed as translucent objects. The example of translucent objects are butter, paper, ice, etc. Now what to do to study if the object is translucent or not. Now over here we have taken example of ice. Take an ice cube, turn on the flashlight of your mobile and try to pass the light, uh, flashlight uh, of your mobile from this ice cube. You will see that not all light like uh, from when, when you took the glass, all the light passed from the glass easily. But when you are taking this ice cube, the light, all the light is not passing through the ice cube very easily instead only partial amount of light is passing through it that's why these substances are known as translucent objects the last one that is opaque objects now there are some objects which do not allow light to pass through it now suppose you are in a dark room turn on the light of that room can you see the light of that room and the doors and windows are closed now will the light of that room pass into another room no, definitely it will not pass because there are walls, doors. Now these walls, doors, uh, when they are closed, they will not allow the light to pass through it. So these all things which do not allow the light to pass through it are termed as opaque objects. The example over here are wood, steel objects, cardboard, etc. Over here I have taken several examples. You can see the picture that these all are the examples of opaque objects. Even we human beings are also opaque objects. When I am reflecting or when I am throwing a light on you, the light will definitely not pass through our body. So human beings are also opaque objects. So now let us summarize what we learned in this chapter that we have learned, we have differentiated materials. First of all, based on its appearance, that is, based on the appearance of the substance, we can divide it into two types, that is dull, shiny. Based on the hardness, we can divide it into two types further, that is soft substance or hard substance. Based on the surface of the material, they are differentiated as smooth and rough. Based on the solubility as soluble and insoluble, then we divided it uh, further 
uh, based on their flotation in water that property that means some objects will sink where some objects will float on the surface of water and lastly we divided our materials based on their transparency into three types that is transparent translucent and opaque so over here we are completing with our chapter i hope you all understood the chapter and learned well